So that was Wild Man Lady Sleeps by John Coltrane. Yeah. Oh my God. So you see now now that the shedding and the sobriety are already paying off because yeah. what he just played there is kind of like perfect. It's beautiful. It's already him, fully formed. His ballad style is now uh, masterful. The, you hear the grace notes, the glissandi. He plays uh, 16th notes on, against the beat. You know, the the way the band is just super hip. Everybody sounds great. That could have been 1963 Ballads album recording easily, yet it's 57, you know? Well, you took the words out of my mouth. I mean, to me, that's a perfect recording. It's just every yeah. note is so precise in its intention. Yeah. He's just totally, totally there. It almost, you know, terrifies you that... You know, oh my God! What if he hadn't beat the devil? You know, yeah. You go like, well, like he was already playing really good. Uh, It's just that the sobriety is going to take that this honest, earnest, hardworking guy. You know, this this beautiful person's playing to this next level. Yeah, you know, great, great choice. And uh, (laughs) for yeah, right off the bat, you know, he plays. That's a that's kind of a bebop uh, hallmark lick that Bird and them would play. That's in the in the canon of of bebop uh, language, and then he and then at the end you have the trumpet player come in and they harmonize so well together. Right, the guy doesn't take a solo. You know who is the guy? Get this, his name is Johnny Splawn plays trumpet on some of that album who knows who who's that yeah right what happened to that man you know because he sounds great and um guess who's on drums albert heath 2d heath one of the heath brothers you know philly homeboy on drums on that whole album and pc is on the whole album and then the funny thing is that the piano uh, chair changes every other tune but it's all recorded on the 31st of may uh, on the 31st of May was also recorded uh, a lot of people's one of a lot of people's favorite recordings of Train is the way he plays on I Hear a Rhapsody, which was released on the Lush Life album, but it was recorded on 5:31:57 on the Coltrane session. It just didn't make it onto the album. And but the piano chair changes every other tune, so I'm not sure if both of the guys were like, "All right, let me play this one. You play this one. I, I want Red Garland on this one, and I want Mal Waldron on this one." And you kind of can't necessarily readily tell them apart on the recording either, because Mal's still playing in his earlier style. His later style was a more droning style, and his earlier style was like really clean vintage bebop, like like Red Garland's playing. So that's that. That's that session, huh? Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, incredible piece, uh, and uh, and yeah, it's just like you said, it's just got all these components that suddenly seem to be coalescing, you know, just in that one beautiful, beautiful ballad. Um, so uh, now we get on to um, our next cue, which is going to need a little bit of lead-in because uh, oh, yeah. he's now playing and practicing and gigging with Thelonious Monk. And how did they, had they played together before? Uh, was this a new kind of encounter for the two of them? What what was going on with that? Well, from my understanding, when Monk stood up for Train, when Miles was abusing him, oh, right. firing him, uh, Train went off to Philly, but I guess... I guess uh, I'm sure Monk put it very clearly, come play with me. Come play with me, you know? And then uh, Monk, you know, had words with Miles. I don't got to beat the man up. You know, all the guys were using this shit back then. All of them. Everybody. So to single one guy out, it doesn't seem fair. Maybe Miles should have beat up Paul Chambers and Philly Joe and Red Garland because they're all junkies too. Right. Right? So Monk says, come play with me. So when Train comes back to New York, gives Monk a call. And, you know, Monk Monk had a funny uh, process where you had to learn his music by ear. He had all the music written down in a briefcase at the, at the foot of his piano in his little apartment. So you can imagine the visual of, like, five brothers crowding, <laughs> crowding into his little room learning the music, you know, with 
and he would never show anybody the music written down in the briefcase. He wanted You all had to learn it by ear with him. He says you would never forget it and you would play it right if you learned it by ear. And if you read it, you're never going to, you don't learn it right. and You won't remember it. And everybody had to go through the monk, the, the I don't know, the, the monk college, the monk school. And uh, you could imagine, it's so hilarious to me, like, you know, monk would play one of those weird chords. It's like a B flat seven flat five over D. You know, it's a really weird sound. He uses it on off minor. And you could imagine him playing gong gong ba 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 with the bass notes you know d in the bottom over a b flat 7 flat 5 chord and you could imagine guys being like you know all smoking cigarettes and <laughs> smelling like bo or something in this little room and saying all right so what do you call that chord monk you call that a b flat 7 flat 5 over d or do you call that a d flat 6 9 da ba da boo da, you know what do you call it? you call it this or this and monk being like yeah 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 just answering affirmative to all of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You to call it what you want. It's this sound. It's these notes. These notes stack this way that creates this resonance that sounds like this. Ah, so that's how everybody learned. And you, so Train was going over to his place every day, all day long. So Monk would go, you know, grocery shopping, go down to the store to get a pack of smokes, you know, go say hi to somebody, come back. Train's still working on his music at his crib. And... That went on for months, and Coltrane talks about it as it's like, like one of the greatest uh, uh, learning experiences of his life was learning how to, just learning about music and the spiritual thing and the intervals and the thing that's from Monk. Monk's like the the high priest of the whole thing. He's the grand sage. It's to the point where Monk taught Coltrane how to play multiphonics on the saxophone. That's a very saxophonic thing. That's like you hold down a note and you raise up a, a, a key to let the air leak out of it. And then you blow through the back pressure of it, the gurgling, and it creates this chord on the saxophone. And they usually sound pretty ugly and pretty terrifying. And it becomes part of your overtone practice and your... your uh, uh, your quest to be a great woodwind player, you have to go through multiphonics and you have to do it all your life and all the greats can play. There's thousands of them on the horn. And while Train plays a multiphonic at the end of While My Lady Sleeps, he plays what is the family of multiphonics that are the first ones you're introduced to. They're, these, they're the chords, uh, uh, like a, a B major chord and a B flat major chord and they're using the palm keys and they're the easiest ones to play. But there's a thousand of them on there. And Monk showed Train how to play multiphonics on the saxophone. And Train laughs like he just seemed to intuit how to, what it was. That shows the genius of Monk, in my opinion, right there. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, let's listen to uh, a song called Nutty. <laughs> yeah, now, if I wanted to tee this up, this would be... We're going to do Blue Train in this episode, which is probably the single greatest Coltrane plays the blues, double up, bebop language. Like, this is the one you want to take through all 12 keys. This is the one where he pl just spells out the language perfect. It's really, sorry about that. It's just perfect. He spells out the language just perfect. And this solo on Nutty is uh, Rhythm Changes where he just spells out the vocabulary. It's just incredible. Now, it's a slightly, slight variation on rhythm changes in that Nutty is the kind of rhythm changes that does rhythm changes on the four chord for the bridge instead of the uh, Gershwin uh, D7, G7, C7, F7 bridge. Rhythm changes is I Got Rhythm, the um, Gershwin tune, right? Right. One, six, two, five, three, six, two, five, and then you do the turnaround, da, 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 and that's the A section. And then the bridge goes to D7, C7, and G7, C7, F7. This one, the bridge goes and does rhythm 1625, but in E flat on the bridge. So it's a slight variation on rhythm changes. All right, let's listen to uh, Thelonious Monk with John Coltrane playing Nutty. <laughs> 